um, that, that doing that can um, necessarily invite people who don't really think that DEI is an important part of project. So I think we need to think about that um, because DEI is an important part of projects, but we need to think about um, if we automate the process that that might invite bad actors that could flood the system. I don't know if people have thoughts on that. Nothing. <laughs> I think that for the automated process, um, I'm a little bit concerned, mostly because of the fear, let's say, that um, it will not, be, like the human factor will not be part of it anymore, which I think yeah. that for the communities, it's very important. And since from my experience, I've seen that uh, the reviewers um, can do it easily. I think that keeping just the um, just the way it is, you know, not having something automated would also be nice and sounds good to me. So. So you do like the idea of some automation, Christy? To, like to a... be honest, no. I oh, just, okay. Yeah, I just like it, you know, to be more interactive, more okay. questions like from people back and forth with the submission. So I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, do you, I'm curious if you have thoughts on like how we might, if, if we just go with like a process that's similar to, to event badging, how we think about um, like maybe limiting the number of projects that could apply right away or something like that. Cause I do have a, <laughs> an acute concern that we're gonna have a lot of applicants potentially with not enough reviewers. Um, I see. You know what I mean? Mm. You don't have to have an answer now, but it might just be something to think about. <laughs> yeah. The, the, or maybe. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, or maybe we can just sign one reviewer per. We could. Yeah. Per like per just year. reduce the volume of of human review necessary. Mm hmm. Yep. Ruth. I, I really do agree that we would, you know, have, because then it's for projects and we do have like a lot of open source projects and I do agree much that would have like a lot of, um, we would have a case where we would have those, um, like a lot of applications with less reviewers. Something I had thought of over the week is, I don't know if we want to kind of do like a beta program or kind of test out how it would be and learn from maybe that and so we could apply it to launching the program like launching project badging fully i don't know if we want to try that as well that that could be something we could try like something like a better program. like launching it on a limited basis like yeah on limited invite? basis first so we can we get to see how we can handle um you know, the reviewing process and every other thing, then before fully like launching it um, so like everyone can apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would be something as well. I was just thinking, um, would it be possible to kind of merge the automated process with a human review process because right now we've been talking i totally just thought of this now that um we talked about having an automated process that would be you know pending and then we would have a human review process that would be passing but there are fair concerns about um having that first step the pending step so um which i agree with would there be uh, any scenario where, like, let's say I submit a project application, and Ruth, we do it kind of on this limited scale to start, um, and that that's assigned immediately to a person, Christy, to your point, um, like one person, um, but that person can actually like push a button. <laughs> 
to to do a, a scan, a high level scan of things against the repository. Does that make sense? You know, like yeah. the, go ahead. If I get you correctly, like you do when you push that button, kind of um, scans through to find what would look for in a human review process. Yeah, exactly. That it would kind of lighten the the load for uh, a human reviewer, a person. When when do we when do we use this part like this push a button part like? when do we do when we have like loads of applications or i don't yeah i don't know um that wasn't i wasn't even thinking for lots of applications it was more like let's say the review gets assigned to you ruth and then so you're responsible for reviewing a project um part of part of the review part of what you have to do could be automated You know what I mean? Like you just get yeah. you just get responses. Like, does the DEI MD file exist? Does are the headers in the DEI file present? You know what I mean? The the metrics um, and the DEI MD file is presented to you, <laughs> like right right in the issue somehow. I don't know how. Like you don't have to go to the repository. And you can simply just read those responses in the DEI MD file quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I think that makes sense because, say, for example, I have like five applications being assigned to me as a reviewer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I I want to start reviewing like right now. When I push this button, it can scan through the five um, the five projects I have to review, and then it brings up like I have to start with that one that has you know the di or the d for this case now the di md file mm -hmm. I start with that one and then the ones that do not have I maybe um you know kind of like acts or maybe the passing I think the pending rather I use the pending yeah. bad so yeah it, it it does make sense to have some part of it automated but I think one thing we might want to be careful of is um, we have to explain this as well. So it doesn't look like the whole process is automated and somebody yeah. is doing all the work. So yeah, that's something we might want to really explain. Yeah, because that was something that came up also was the, oh, uh, where was it? It's like at the top of page two in the minutes. Oh no, that wasn't it. Um, oh, it's the, yeah, it's the top there. When things are automated, people have expectations about response time. <laughs> And so if we say that this is automated to any degree, we might want to say, and there's a human component too. <laughs> so you may not get a response like this afternoon kind of thing. I think that's what you're referring to, Ruth. Yeah. So Sean, Sean, I don't know if you're listening to this and how this resonates with the conversation you have had with Demetrius. Yeah, I think I think that um, this can work. So long, you mean the what the part that I'm not quite sure about from the conversation is is there always a human in the loop in this case? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think if yeah, I mean that's not what we were hoping for. But if it's what the community supports, then I just have to talk to Demetrius and maybe work. Maybe maybe we can work together to find a way to ex make that process as efficient as possible. Yeah, exactly. So that was the like the yeah the proposal push, the push the button kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. which is the sure the review is assigned to you, Sean. Right. But like, how can we? And Chris would suggested maybe just one reviewer per. Mm -hmm. But like we, the burden on that person is down to like five or it's 10. much lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, um, I think it, uh, it, yeah, it, and and if we uh, hit a scale problem, then we uh, try to recruit 
more reviewers and train them. For Ruth's point too, like perhaps we could just do pilot first. Like we, I don't know, you have to apply. I don't know. Some way to limit (laughs) the potential. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, Demetrius hasn't gotten back to me about that initiative at this point. So I think okay. when she does, I'll, I'll bring this to her. I'll, I'll bring it to her attention next week if okay. I haven't heard from her on it before this meeting. And that way, um, that way I'll have, um, are we still thinking two levels or would that just take us back to one level? Um, it would probably just take us back to one level. Okay. I think there's just too many concerns about removing the human from the loop as you say okay i i yeah i i I understand got it i think um yeah we'll 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 see what we'll see we'll see what uh yeah we'll we'll see what that where that discussion leads i'm i'm optimistic we'll find a way to i am to do this well yes i am too okay cool thanks everybody great thank you so we can now jump to the other point, which I guess is for Matt G. It's for me to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, we've been, you know, this round of, of metrics release, we're really supposed to be reviewing metrics from working groups. And I'm, I'm assigned to the DEI working group. And I did a couple at the beginning. and. I need to do more. So I just, that's coming. I should start that up again this week. Okay, great. Uh, the other thing we have here, it's diversity access tickets for ChaosCon Europe. We should add a link to the scholarship page. Yeah, also me. So, um, okay, so right now, if you want to attend Open Source Summit, or I'm sorry, if you want to attend ChaosCon Europe, you have to apply for, you have to register for Open Source Summit Europe, like the larger conference. That's just how it works because the Linux Foundation is handling our registration at the moment. And I'm pretty sure that registration for Open Source Summit Europe is probably pretty expensive. I don't know. Does anybody know how much it is? I don't know, $600. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's probably, it's probably up there. So ChaosCon itself is only fifty dollars, but um, for us to provide a, a free registration for ChaosCon only saves fifty dollars. It doesn't remove the OSS EU registration. See what I'm saying? So somebody would still have to pay six hundred dollars <laughs> to basically get to ChaosCon. Um, so there's probably not much we can do about that this time around i can i could get chaos con vouchers like save 50 dollars um the other option is that we add a link to the site that i put on there the scholarship page so i'll put it in the chat here so this is um this is like scholarships provided by the Linux Foundation to attend Open Source Summit Europe. And I can confirm that like, if you get accepted to attend Open Source Summit Europe, you can attend ChaosCon, that's not a problem. So I think the best solution for us right now is just to add this to the website for Open Source Summit or yeah, for ChaosCon Europe. And just say, if you plan on attending ChaosCon and need financial support in doing so, please follow the Linux Foundation scholarship process. What do people think of that? Good. Yeah. Okay. I have one question. So for somebody, for example, that has a ticket for the chaos con, Uh can they, so they cannot access the, the open source conference Europe, right? That's correct. Okay. But it can happen the other wise, like somebody. Yep. That has, okay. Thank yep. You. I'm kind of learning all these things as I, <laughs> as I work with events and registration, all that kind of stuff. Now the, the stream, the CASCON stream will be available publicly and free of charge. 
Okay, awesome. Yep, so we will be live streaming it. Um, so then my, my, my other thought then too was, do in the future, do we want to have chaos cons or what are people's thoughts on on having chaos cons independent of the like open source summit you know europe or something like that lots of times we attach them but in the past sean you remember vancouver we yeah we had that one remember we had it was it wasn't in the same physical space it was out exactly. of an off-site space and then we handled there was our a little orchestration then too though we did yeah we handled our own yeah we handled our own registration there was no coupling mm -hmm. um there was some con there's some conveniences associated with the coupling but if we're looking to make access more widely available i mean decoupling them is not not difficult it just requires finding a site and frankly like with fosdem we've never had a tr problem doing that and <clears throat> certainly in dublin if we had needed to we would not have had a problem mm -hmm. doing that yep. so I mean, they're generally not holding these things in um, East East Bumbletown, Texas. No, they're usually <laughs> pretty available. Where where we know faculty members generally that we can get university access. So the what Sean is kind of alluding to is the Linux Foundation gives like working with them. They are amazing, and they provide um, a room. They they provide support for registration. We get on the website, you know, for like Open Source Summit Europe. There are so many things that we get, but as was pointed out, we have this this registration question. If we decouple, we don't get those other things, um, but we can provide broader access because you don't have to register through the the Linux Foundation. Or we could maybe try to find a way to I don't know to work more deliberately with the LF in the future. You know what I mean? So that we would still have on site and they could still register for that seems like a fairly big ask, though, to say pass registration through except for chaos. Con. I don't, do people have thoughts on this? Um, I think that many people have mixed feelings for the conferences like for open source summit. Mm -hmm. and things like that because they seem a little bit too corporate yeah and people from the free software communities maybe it's not their favorite conference to go to and they feel like a uh, chaos con is something that's very close to the community which i guess that many many people for example that are um that go to false demo definitely love to go to chaos con but i'm not sure if they would like to go to a to an open source summit. Right. They have different, in my opinion, they have very different um, target groups of people, probably. So I guess that uh, being like as a separate thing from the events of the uh, Linux Foundation, I think that maybe we might not have those benefits, as you mentioned, Matt, and maybe not a lot of money due to the tickets and so on. But I guess that it would be more accessible for people to join. And I think that we would have more audience. Many other okay. stuff. Yep. And so, okay, that's, um, I hear you on that. And I would say that, you know, we do a chaos con, at least we have in the past with, with FOSDEM, but, you know, like Corona kind of <laughs> screwed all that up. But, um, uh, and it was really well attended at FOSDEM too. So, um, and I completely agree, Christy. It's a, they are very different audiences that attend the conferences. Um, okay, so your, your thoughts, Christy, are perhaps to decouple them. Yeah, I mean, okay. all benefits are so good and it would be good to have them even if we, um, even if we separate, but yeah, in my opinion, okay. I, I, I suspect that we'll still have chaos cons associated with open source summit Europe or North America. Um, and one like the cycle that seemed to work really well was one with hey precious the cycle that seemed to work really well was the open source summit North America. You know, like a chaos con and we could separate that um, and then the other was with FOSDEM. 
Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, for the false, then it's excellent. I think mm -hmm. that's only going to grow in terms of people joining. Yeah, and that would that would help too because it is two different audiences. I mean, Chaos is a Linux Foundation project, so I do think it's important for us to be at least like have a Chaos Con with one of the conferences. Mm -hmm. um, but it still could be decoupled. I don't think there's any any problem there. So, cool. Okay. Nice. Um, any other thoughts on this? All right. Uh, thank you for the feedback. I this is really great. Thank you. Okay. We have the other thing that's DI badging for Chaoscon Europe. I am yeah, this is me again. Hi. <laughs> so um this is just a question that comes up all the time. Should we submit uh ChaosCon for a DEI event badge? Like that seems like we should. Seems like we should, but then we're reviewing ourselves, which also seems a little weird. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. I think we should. <laughs> you think we should or shouldn't? We should. Okay, I got two votes for should. <laughs> yeah, plus one for me too. <laughs> okay, all right. I will. That is not. A problem. And okay, <laughs> I, I'm getting four four yeses from this group, so that seems like it's a. Uh, uh definitely a yes okay thank you i will bring that back to the all right five it's, it's a... <laughs> that seems like a unanimous all right cool thank you i'll bring that back to the committee and we will get that submitted maybe we can change like for this specific uh event we can just change the reviewers maybe someone... <laughs> We probably should so that it's not the event organizers reviewing <laughs> the yeah. event. That doesn't seem that doesn't seem appropriate. <laughs> but we can figure this out later. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Welcome. I think uh, so. We have one other thing. It's uh, my talk at uh, Alsace. Yeah, State. I've got that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my talk for. Um, at um, the Open Source Summit Europe was accepted. Um, so the topic um, is building like a um, kind of like sharing our focus areas at uh, the DI group and, you know, share part of the work or all of the work we do here at um, DI during the talk. So yeah, I just want to put out there that my talk was accepted. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. So you're going to be there. Yeah, I'm planning to be there. I, I think I did apply for travel funding. So I think by July 28. Okay. You should to, find out before then. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm planning to be there in person. So. Okay, well, keep me posted, would you, Ruth? Sure, I will. Okay, cool. Right on. Great. Congratulations, Ruth. Okay. Wait, before yeah. you go, Sean, make me host. You, okay. oh, I did. I believe I already did. Okay, you did. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye, Sean. Well, actually, we're at the end. <laughs> yeah. So, do we have uh, something else that we want to discuss? I'm pretty good. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like the, I just have to say the impact that this, the DEI working group, has made in the chaos project is immense. So um, just thank you for everybody's for everybody's work and commitment. It's amazing. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you everybody for joining the meeting this week and see you all next Wednesday. Till then have a good week. Okay. Thank you everybody. It's good to see you all. Yeah. Bye everyone. Bye.